This will be the first of two lessons devoted to armed conflicts. In this class, we will deal with human interaction, the concept of war, the rules of war, international humanitarian law, and some main principles. There are basically two kinds of human interaction. It can be either cooperative, when interests are aligned, or it can consist of an opposition of interests. Now, there are three ways to deal with a situation of opposition of interests, short of the use of violence. First, adjudication by a third party which has the power to enforce its decision. Second, negotiation and settlement. And third, the submission or surrendering of one party to the exigencies of the other. If both parties consider that the interests at stake are vital and none of the alternatives work or is available, history shows that there is always a confrontation through violent means. When this confrontation involves states or organized rebels within a state, we call it war. Following Karl von Clausewitz, a Prussian officer who fought in the Napoleonic Wars and who wrote the book On War, war is a confrontation between forces capable of exerting legal or physical sovereign power. That is, in the territory or over the people they control, there exists in actual fact no higher power. In theory, and as an absolute concept, war tends to extremes and is unlimited. But in practice, Clausewitz says that war can indeed be limited or regulated. Now, since war can be ruled by norms, there are two separate realms where those rules can make sense. On the one hand, there can be moral and legal arguments in favor or against of going to war in the first place. This kind of discourse is known as jus ad bellum, or the legal and moral right to resort to war, as is mainly regulated in Chapter 7 of the UN Charter. On the other hand, once war has started, whether just or unjust in light of jus ad bellum, there is another level where some basic rules must be respected by all parties in the conflict regarding the conduction of hostilities and the treatment of people. This level is known as use in bello, or the rules applicable to ongoing hostilities. This is legally known as international humanitarian law. International humanitarian law is the branch of public international law that regulates armed conflicts. It is of exceptional nature. It has a vast amount of rules and its international instruments have more ratifications than any other branch of international law. Humanitarian law is much older than human rights law. Its customary rules can be traced back to medieval times. Its written norms date back to the lever instructions for the United States Army during the American Civil War and the first Geneva Convention of 1864. General conventional norms of international humanitarian law can be divided into a. Four Hague Law Conventions dated between 1899 and 1907 b. Four Geneva Law Conventions signed in 1949 and referred to the wounded, the sick and the shipwrecked members of armed forces, prisoners of war and civilians and c. Two additional protocols to those Geneva Conventions that were signed in 1977. Protocol 1 deals with wars of national liberation or fought by peoples against foreign or racist regimes. Protocol 2 refers to internal conflicts between the state and organized armed groups that, under a responsible command, control part of the territory so that they may conduct sustained and concerted military operations. There are also several specific conventions on humanitarian law. 
used in Bello was traditionally divided into the Hague law regarding the conduct of hostilities and means and methods of combat and the Geneva law which has to do with the protection of non-combatants, that is, civilians and people horse to combat or out of combat, including prisoners of war. It is generally accepted that with the enactment of the two additional protocols of 1977, this distinction is superfluous. Finally, it is noteworthy the role played by the International Committee of the Red Cross, a humanitarian organization founded in 1863 to relieve human suffering during armed conflicts, and whose opinions are deemed authoritative in international humanitarian law. From the concept and features of war proposed by Clausewitz, there are some fundamental principles that can be derived. These principles are military necessity, proportionality or humanitarian principle, and the distinction principle. Military necessity dictates that all those actions reasonably leading to obtaining a military advantage cannot be prohibited. Proportionality, on the other hand, means that all those actions which, on the contrary, do not have a military necessity rationale are forbidden. The principle of distinction dictates that military necessity and proportionality must be wisely distinguished from each other. In the next class, we will study the normative criteria stemming from these principles, as well as some current issues in the field of armed conflicts. Please visit our website mookchile.com. Also, don't forget to watch the next class on armed conflicts of this course.